Hi everybody, it's Kit, and I am hoping you are all preparing yourself for a wonderful Easter weekend. Hope it's a blessed one for you, and that you're safe and sound. And today we're going to do another one of the 52 projects, and this one is, I call File Me. It's a little mini album, and inside it has little photo mats with tabs on them and they uh, fit in to your file folder. So I hope that uh, it's going to be fun for you. I like making these. I think these are fun. And I've already done a couple because I did one as a gift and then I am uh, I did one for my scrapbook that I did my mini album journal with the Graphic 45 old Curiosity Shop papers. And what I did is I used up my scraps and I'm going to put this in the mini album to put some more um, wallet size photos on. Or these also will hold ATC cards. So anyway, let's get started and I'm being kind of finicky about this paper. I have one piece of paper left from Graphic 45 Old Curiosity Shop Collection. This is the counting down paper with those crazy ladies on them that I really really like. And I'm trying to debate. If you do your own design work you need to get one of these clear rulers. I use this for quilting. I also have a 12 inch one. But this is my go-to one, the 12 by 6. <clears throat> Excuse me, easier to handle and uh, it seems to do the job. You can see I've got tape on it where I use it for all different kinds of projects. But um, the first cut we're going to make is going to be a 4 inch by 12 inch cut and that is going to be the wraparound part of the file folder. So I'm debating, I want to get the women on the lip that folds over but I can't decide whether I want to go with this side of it and have the women's feet hanging down and we need to go 7.75 up on this. It's going to be 4 inches by 7.75 so it's just going to cut across the top of this one's head which will fold up so I'll have the face but I'm going to put a this is thinking ahead I'll be putting a closure on it so it's going to cover her up anyway. So then if I do it on this side of the paper, I can have this uh, fan flourish going up and down one side. Still get my women on the flap, so I think that's the direction I'm going to go. So I want to make my 4-inch cut this direction, so let's get started on it. Before I change my mind again. <laughs> okay, so I want this to be the 4 inch. So we're going to cut a 4 by 12. Yep, that's what I want to do. 4 by 12. And then out of the 4 by 12, we're going to, I'm going to cut a 7.75. And that'll give me the cuts I want, so then I just have to make sure I do my folds in the right direction. And this, if you aren't working with the directional paper, it doesn't matter. But of course I have to make it a little bit more difficult because I see what I want, so I've got to get what I want. So 7.75. And then we're going to come on down here and we're going to cut two more, I think 1.875. Did I write that down somewhere? Let me see. 1.875, yes, times four. Okay, 1.875, 1 in 7 eighths. I'm going to make two cuts. And this is going to be the side. It's going to be all accordion folded, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know why I even am stressing over that part of it. Okay, and then we're just going to get 
get rid of that scrap. So, I hope you followed me through on that. We've got a 4 by 7.75, and we've got a 4, and that's 7 and 3 quarters, 7.75. Then we have a 4 by 1.875, 4 and, or 1 and 7 eighths, two times. Okay? So we've got our file folder wraparound, and we got our side accordion pieces ready to go. Now let's go ahead and keep cutting, and then we can put our cutting board away. Out of the remainder piece, and let me scrutinize this a little bit. We're going to cut a two, 3.75, I'm sorry, I phased out a little bit there. 3.75s. So I'm going to come on in, yeah, I'm going to come on in from this direction. So cut 12 by 3.75 two times. Three point seven five. Okay, and then we have a border scrap. Good, I can make some more bracelets. <laughs> okay, and now out of these, and again I want to do a little thinking here. We want these cut. I want to make three 2.75 inch cuts and then the rest of it's going to be a piece to punch out the tabs and the center or the uh, closure circle so let's come on from the bottom so we're going to go 2.75 once. Cut her head off, but that's okay. Not going to stress. 2.75 twice. Pretty skirt. Oh good, we're going to get her head. <laughs> we're not cutting her head off. 2.75. Three times, so I'm going to set this bigger piece aside. And then come back with this one. 2.75 once. Two point seven five. Good. We'll get their heads on the next one. Twice. Two point seven five. Three times. Okay, so we've got our six index cards that are going to fit inside our file folder which are going to be our photo mats. Now to the pieces we've got left and we can put our scoreboard away now. I mean our cutting board. Hello? Pay attention. Out of the pieces we've got left we're going to use our um, I'm using the Stampin' Up! Tab Punch if you don't have that, you can use whatever you want just to make tabs. We want six tabs, and we also will want a big old circle. At least I want a big old circle. This is the other side of that paper, too, by the way. I didn't even turn it over. It's got the big numbers on it, which we could put one of the big numbers on here. may not have to worry about... Although I would like to get one of these rear ends. I think that would be funny. <laughs> that would be so cute. But then that her head would be tipping over. She'd be doing a back bend. We'll hold that till later. We'll play with our punches later. Let's go ahead and get this done with our scoreboard. So get your scoreboard out. And we just have a few things to do. It's very, very easy. Another easy, easy one. Okay, this is going to be our wraparound, and I know I want this to be the flap that folds over the top. So, and if I just get their legs, that's fine with me. So, it's going to go this way, if that makes sense to you. So, this will be the top, and this will be the bottom that comes up under it. See, you could do it this way, too, if you had a nice design down here. So orientate your paper to your desires, whatever your design elements uh, tell you 
you want to have. So we're working on the flap here, and the flap piece is going to be 1.75. So we're going to score it. Let me get this. Hope this is in camera. Hello, are you there? 1.75. Oh yeah, see that picks up the bottom of her skirt and the legs. Okay, then we're going to come up uh, 3.75, so that'd be two and an eighth. So our first score is one and three quarters, 1.75. The next score is uh, 3.75 away from that score, so that sets us at two and an eighth, 2.125. Then we're going to come down here, we're going to come um, three and a quarter down. So one, two, three and a quarter. Next score is going to be at five and three eighths, 5.375. And then we're going to come over another, what do I want that at, a quarter? No, I wanted that at three eighths. One, two, three. 3.75 um, off that line, so that sets us at 5.75. And then the remainder piece should be two inches, and it is. So we did all that scoring correctly. Okay? Now, the other things we're going to score are those little thin pieces that we're going to score these every half inch. I think it's a half inch. Let me, do we score it a half? Yeah. We're going to score it every half inch across the board. So a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Okay, same thing on this one. And it doesn't matter which way you score on this one. I forgot to tell you, on the one we just scored, the big one, you want to score where your outside is on the top of your score pad so that when you fold, you're folding opposite the score. On this, it doesn't really matter because we're going to accordion fold this up. So one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Okay? Now start bending in and just accordion fold this up. Get it as even as you can. And this is going to provide our side piece that um, will hold the sides of the folder together and our photo mats will sit down inside. Okay. Same thing with the second piece. Just get them as even as you can. And then I'm just burnishing to try to set. Set it in a little better. So that's it. I don't have any more scoring to do. Well, let's keep this out and let's go ahead and burnish these score lines. So this is going to be the flap coming down. This is going to be the breathing space. This is going to be the large back area. Some more breathing space that our accordion is going to set in. And then this will define the bottom section. Oops. This one of my breathing spaces. There we go. Set. So, when you look at this now, see, isn't that cute? I got their little legs there, got this little frou-frou coming up there. Big old circle will fit in here. I'm happy with that. And then on the back, um, everything's upside down on the back, but it doesn't really matter because, well, it just doesn't matter to me. There are no because. <laughs> it just doesn't matter to me. It's on the back. So. Um, 
what I was going to say is a lot of times I glue these in to the mini albums so you don't see the back anyway. But even if you don't glue them in, you could wrap a ribbon around there. You could put another design element on the back if you wanted to. All kinds of ideas to think about. It's getting dark in here. we got a storm coming in. Let me get some more light going so that... Yeah, there. Hopefully that's better. It's better for me. I can see better. Okay, so now is when I would ink all the edges. If you wanted to do that, I think I might do that actually. Because it's easier to do that before you put your accordions in. So, again, I'm just taking my sponge and hitting the edges. And my ink pad... This is my one that isn't as inky as the other one. It's just going to give me a light antiquing on the edges. And then I have another one that's a juicier ink pad that will give me darker, but on this one I want lighter. don't know why. I just think it would look better with that real, real light background on the paper. And this inside is really dark, so I would just make sure you don't have any white edges showing through. And the only other place on this, no one inks up here, on this crease because you're not going to see the bottom crease. The accordions are going to hold it. Um, nope, I did the wrong one. This one. <laughs> The accordions will hold the bottom piece shut, so you don't need to ink those edges, the ones I just did. And I'm going to ink the edges of my accordion, too, just to get some color in there. Again, I don't want this one heavily, heavily inked. Just enough to get some color on it. Give it a little depth. That's all we're going for. Okay, now, this is our section, our folder section. So the next thing I'm going to do are, is take my accordion pieces, and we have got... Our end flaps are folded in one direction. This is the piece that we're going to glue to the accordion or to the file folder wrap. And if there's a directional on them, just make sure you got them going up and down. I'm using my quick dry adhesive. Make sure I got it in the right direction. And just nestle it down in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. on top of that first score line. So see it's just going to wrap this accordion like a nice little nice little tuck and close it all. So put your accordions on both sides. Okay, this is up. right, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Just get it positioned there. Get it positioned enough so that they're not going to hang over the front. If you see that happening, just bend your accordions in a little bit. You don't want them to show on the front. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Okay, then... I'm going to pull that other piece up. And it's going to wrap. So just make sure you get these tucked in. 
And you got some working time with this glue. But not a lot, because it dries pretty quick. And if you keep repositioning it, you're going to have to put some more glue on it, because it does... in there. Okay, there we go. Now we've got our little file folder all made and ready to go. And you can make these any size you want. This just was the perfect size to put the wallet size photos in and allow a little space for to put a tab on, the tabs that I used. See? If you can see up in there. And the way the closure is going to work is that the top of the folder part is just going to tuck down under that little circle there. And I fold the edges of my circles back. I just, I don't know, when I tuck something under something, I kind of like when I'm the tucker or the tuck E folded back. This is the tuck E, and that's the tucker. So I want the tucker folded back. <laughs> Semantics! Woohoo! Here's the other one. This one might show up a little bit better on camera. I don't know. It's got a little bit bigger roll on it, too. You don't have to roll it. You can leave it flat. In fact, I made a little tiny one. This is totally out of scale, but I'm making this for my little French journal that I'm making for my sis. She celebrated her birthday in Paris. So, um, this one, I did not roll it. I just used a decorative punch and punched out. And it's going to automatically flip up a little bit just from the tucking. The tucker into the tucky is going to cause a little bit of a roll out there. That's why I might as well put one on to begin with. And then look at these little bitty tiny cards that are in here. So all this was, I think I reduced... I sketched out my pattern and then I just reduced it by 50% or maybe it's 25% but just made a little bit tiny one. You can make them any size you want. Again, it depends on what you want to do with them. These, this size, I've got something specific I'm going to put on each one of these little cards. So that's why I wanted little bitty ones in here. Um, these, again, will hold wallet size. So let's go ahead now and work on finishing up the cards because your file folder is basically done except for putting the closure on the front and these are all your photo cards and I'll do one of them just to show you how I did it and then you can carry on from there. So here's where kind of look at the punch you're going to use and what's going to show up in your punch and I really wanted to get some of these girls in this punch. Oh, there. That one fits pretty good. But I don't want to run out of paper either. So this is how easy these tabs are to use if you get your hands on one of these. This is the Stampin' Up! Tab Punch, which is one of my favorite designs, but also like doing circles. There's all kinds of different tab pulls you can do. So whatever your heart desires. And you can round your corners on these if you want. You could put decorative corners on your photo mats. You can do anything you want. I'm just making it real simple, real easy. Staying with this few supplies as possible in one sheet of 12 by 12. In fact, you could get a couple more photo cards out of your leftover here if you don't use the paper for your tabs. You don't have to put tabs on them if you don't want. I just like the tabs on them. And then you just decide which side you want up, which side you want back. I think I want her feet. Yeah, I think I want the feet on this side. Then on the next one, what I'll do is I'll reverse the tab and use the darker side. 
for the next one in line and I just line them up. The next card I would use going this direction and I'd put a dark tab on it. So I just flip the tab over if that makes sense. So there you go. And then once you get all those done and everything punched out, oh, we forgot to do the circle, didn't we? What do I want to do out of the circle? I think I'm going to go with the darker. Yeah, definitely. That would be good to put the darker one on. So, I hope this isn't boring. You know I'm going to hold that one for tabs. This one doesn't have anything in the back. So, let's just go with 2 inch punch. And I'm going to punch number out. Let's see if I can see there. I always punch upside down so I can see what's actually coming out. So now I've got number sign. And we shall ink it up. Have to give me another sponge here. I about worn this one to a pulp. <laughs> I ink both sides just because I'm not sure what I end up rolling back. I just want all my bases covered. Okay, and I want this position just like that. So let me take this pen's a little big, but all you need to do is take a pen or a pencil or a even do a skewer if you wanted a real tight roll. Once you get a roll started though, you can make it just about any size you want. And again, like I said, you don't have to put a roll on it at all if you don't want. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue this just halfway. I'm going to put glue halfway up on the back of this. And this glue will hold this closure nice and tight. So let's position it where we want it. You can measure to get it exactly in the center. I don't. And this will tuck in and out very nicely. It should hold it in. Whoops. Actually, I need to glue it a little bit more, don't I? Pull it up a little bit. That's another thing. Make sure, there you go, that's just an example. Make sure you got it far enough up that it will hold down your flap. Otherwise, you're defeating the purpose of a closure there. I think I'll have to put some more glue under there. And once you get it on, you can manipulate a little bit and decide where you need what. Just don't glue your upper flap underneath it. Because then you can't get your file folders out. There. So, hope that made sense to you and hope you enjoy that. Easy, easy. Another easy peasy one. We'll look at this one again. All finished with the file folder tabs in. And again, the, this one was just scraps things that were left over from the old curiosity shop mini album journal made on the Strathmore base. So I've got a lot more in here too. Again, if you don't cut tabs out of your paper, you can use those bottom section as two more additional photo mats for your wallet size cards. But I'm staying within one sheet of 12 by 12, so... I hope you get the drift, but isn't that cute? And it makes a nice little mini album. 
all kinds of things you could use this for. It'd be great for co-workers just because if you work in an office atmosphere or even anywhere you work nowadays, you probably have file folders, so it'd just be their own little personal file folders. Um, be a cute grandmother's album to put baby pictures in, mother's album to put their kids' pictures in, uh, anything. You can use it for anything. So, hope you enjoyed that. And the only other thing I wanted to show you, and we can do it real quick, is this. And I wasn't going to show you this because I didn't have any backgrounds done on my tags. And I was watching Michelle's videos this morning. Hi, Michelle. Uh, the Paper Addiction. And she, she reminded me how we used to use the napkins. She calls them servettes, which that always makes me giggle because anytime... My sis asked me if she, we have a servette. I think she wants a servant to appear out of nowhere or a waitress or something. So um, the napkins make excellent backgrounds for the tags. This is a tag album, by the way. I think I skipped over that. I got so excited. Michelle's videos are great. So uh, the paper addiction. Be sure and watch her on YouTube. And um, she does such beautiful work. I'm just so proud to have her as a friend. This is a paper napkin uh, background. This is a paper napkin background. This is a paper napkin background. Yay! You did it! You did it! Oops, that one's coming off. Need to get more tape on it. This is a paper napkin background. So, again, I wasn't going to show this to you because I really, all I had in here were white tags. But uh, she gave me the motivation to get some of the napkins out. Now, at least I got backgrounds on these so I can play with them. And this is the tag book that I showed you earlier on one of my videos. I'd stopped making tags because I just didn't know what to do with them. And now I've got this little box book that I can keep my tags in. Finished tags, half-finished tags. I know where they are and get in and work on them anytime I want. So let me give you the measurements to do that. And again, I'm just going to tell you the measurements. I'm not going to do another one of them. I might do it on the next video, but I'm running out of time here. So what you're going to do, and write this down, on your 12 by 12, this is another one project out of a 12 by 12 piece of paper. You're going to score three and an eight. 4.625, 4 and 5 eighths, 7.75, 7.75, 7 8.875. So let's do that again. 3 and, a, 3 and an 8, 3.125, 4 7.75, 7 and 3 quarters, 8.875, 8 and 7 eighths. Then you're going to turn. And you're going to score at 5.75 and 6.25. Then you are going to burnish all your fold lines. And then you're going to come in here on the bottom part. And this section in here, you're going to cut out. I hope this is in camera is an inch and a half in here. You're going to cut this out up to the second score line and do the same thing here up to the second score line. And that is going to make your breathing spaces for your tags to flip up in. I need some more tape on this. Apparently, you know, I textured the background on this tag so it's not grabbing on as tight there. And I don't worry about using, I don't using the uh, real tape on it. The temporary tape I don't think is good enough probably to hold your tags in as they get heavier. But it doesn't matter to me because I'll probably leave my tags in the book, number one, so I don't have to worry about the backs. Or if I did decide to take the tags out of here, it doesn't matter to me what the back of the tags look like because I'm either going to put another tag on the back just to make it stronger 
or I might even just distress up the back. That's usually what I do and sign my name or something. So this is my tag book for all those of you that are doing all the Tim's tags or um, I saw some tag classes going on too, which I think I might go look at um, once I get done working on my own tags. Again, several of these tags are for the French Journal. I'm going to put them in the French Journal. So they are in the coral colorway groups. And um, then I made a tag. This one, I think I'm going to uh, stick it in the old curiosity shop. I still have a lot to do on it though, but I got some scraps that I can fussy cut. And I like that background, the way that turned out. That's just taking the ink, or not ink, acrylics, and using the credit card to paint the background on. Um, this background here was just mixing acrylic paint with PVC glue and painting it on and then inking with the vintage photo and the stamping up Calypso Coral because I just wanted kind of a plain background on that. And these others are just stamp backgrounds. Again, I told you napkins.